Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if there's one technology that is divisive between developers and users, it's Electron. This thing basically packages a website inside of a Chromium browser and ships it as a desktop app. And while it has many advantages for developers, it also has many issues for their users. So let's take a look at Electron, why developers generally love it and why users often hate it. But do you know what people really like these days? These segues to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, but this time I'm not going to talk about their services to handle and manage your Linux server fleet. This time they are giving you access to an independent study by IDC Peerscape that analyzes if, when, and how to implement open source solutions alongside commercial ones. And no, before you ask, Tuxcare did not influence this study at all, either financially or in terms of messaging. It's completely independent. We probably all agree that using open source software can be beneficial to any organization. Companies traditionally focus on using an optimal mix of commercial software and community supported open source software to try and get all the benefits while minimizing the potential risks. This study that you can get for free discusses the five best practices for organizations to determine when, where, and how to use community-supported open source software alongside commercially supported software. So click the link below to download the full report and learn about open source best practices. So what is Electron really? Because you can't truly hate something if you don't really know what it is. Electron is a framework that lets developers create applications using web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. It's open source and maintained by the OpenJS Foundation. And it's cross-platform, meaning that apps built with Electron run on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. It allows developers to build automatic updates inside of their apps, to integrate with the menuing system of the operating system, and with its notifications. And it is used by a lot of different applications, like VS Code, WhatsApp, Microsoft Teams, Discord, Slack, Twitch, and a lot more. Basically, it lets a developer build a website or a web app, wrap it inside of a Chromium browser without all the browser controls, and distribute it as if it was a native application. The only difference with the regular website that you would access through your browser is that most of the files the website used to display its content are directly inside the app, inside of being accessed on the internet. So why do a lot of developers favor the Electron route instead of developing a truly native application for all systems? Um, excuse me, but Electron is native to all operating systems. Yes, yes, okay, but in this video, I'll be using the term native application to refer to apps that were developed using toolkits and frameworks that are platform specific like GTK or Qt on Linux, or UWP on Windows, or Cocoa and Objective-C on macOS. Okay, so the first reason why developers favor Electron is obvious. Developing apps using native technologies on all platforms takes a long time, a different set of skills, and a different set of knowledge for each platform. And so you do need more developers, more time, and more money. Using Electron, you can develop your web app, accessible on the web through a regular web browser, and that code can be reused as is to make your desktop applications, because all Electron does is grab that website and pack it into a local app. Of course, some Electron apps do a bit more than this and aren't just websites, but that's what most of them are. So you develop just once, and every time you update your website, for example, you just need to make sure that the Electron apps grab those updated files, download them, reload the page, and boom, you're done. You don't have to spend the time redeveloping the same feature on three, four, five different operating systems with different languages and different toolkits. Second reason, debugging code for web technologies like JavaScript is pretty easy compared to lower level languages like C, C++, or Objective-C. JavaScript is interpreted line by line, so noticing where the error is, is way easier. Okay, and now all the developers in the comments can tell me how wrong I am and how Rust or Python or anything else is just a better language than any other language on the planet. All I'm saying is that it's relatively easy with JavaScript to know where you messed up and where the error is located. Another reason for developers to favor Electron is that Electron apps can auto-update very easily. 
All you have to do is make sure that your Electron app can detect when the code for your website has changed and download the new files on your computer. A quick reload of the page and you're up to date. You do not have to cater to a software store that will review your update, take three to six days to approve it, or even flat out refuse your update. Now on Linux, it's not really an issue anymore as developers can self-publish on Flatpak or the Snap Store and everything is generally pretty fast. But on macOS or Windows, the review process can take days. So if you have a critical bug fix for your users, you would probably prefer if that fix was deployed immediately as it's ready. Of course, it also means that developers can push whatever they want to users without any control from the platform holders, for example, Windows or macOS. So if their repo gets hacked, any malicious hacker can push whatever they want to the application itself. And there are a bunch of other reasons. Testing your application is extremely easy without long compilation times. And the community around Electron is huge, so you have plenty of online resources to help you get started or to help you solve problems. Ultimately, Electron lets companies focus on what they want to do, which is building more features and improving their application. They don't have to spend more time or more money on different developers. They can hire often cheaper web developers instead of ones that have the skills for each specific platform. They don't have to waste time re-implementing stuff. And it also kind of lets them bypass the store updates policies, which companies tend to like. So generally for companies, Electron is a win. But Electron also has a lot of issues. While it generally makes the developer's life easier, for the user it's less clear cut. First, Electron doesn't integrate really well with the operating system. It's just a web browser displaying a website that is stored on your computer instead of being stored on a server. This means that if Electron doesn't support a specific feature of your operating system, the apps using it also won't. For example, Electron discontinued support for 32-bit systems. So if you have an older computer, none of these Electron apps will work, even though the website itself would work perfectly well. Since the application also doesn't use a native toolkit like GTK or Qt on Linux, it also won't respect your theme, your accent color, your icon theme, your header bar preferences, all those things. It might support dark mode because that's something that's baked into Chromium and into Electron, but that's it. What's the use of ricing your whole desktop to put it up on Unix porn if some applications just don't respect all your hard work? Oh, wait, we already have Libet Vita for that. Now, it's also true for Mac and Windows, by the way. It's not limited to Linux. A web app running locally will never look exactly like an application using the operating system's human interface guidelines. Or it will look almost perfect on one OS and completely out of place on the others. Although just putting Windows and human interface guidelines in the same sentence just doesn't feel right at all. Now, of course, that's not something that will bother everyone. Some people are fine with using apps that don't look or feel the same, and that's okay too. A bigger problem though, is that while it's pretty easy to update the content of the app, the website part of the application, a lot of developers don't generally update the Electron part of their application. See, when you create an Electron app, you have basically two code bases, your web app and Electron and both should be updated regularly because Electron using Chromium needs to be as up-to-date as any web browser you would use every day to ensure that security flaws are patched. That's often not the case and it gets worse when you take into consideration operating system integration. An example is Discord on Linux. It uses an older version of Electron that doesn't support Wayland very well. Electron does have Wayland support and good support at that but Discord, by not updating the Electron version they use, deprive users of that support. So on Wayland, Discord doesn't support screen sharing. Or when you use the Flatpak version, it doesn't support file portals. So in the end, you can't share your screen with other people. And when you try to open a file to upload, for example, you will always get the GTK file picker, even if you're on KDE. And that file picker can only see files that are accessible through the Flatpak sandbox which means that unless you've given Discord permission to access your whole home directory with something like flat seal, you're not going to be able to upload anything at all. This is problematic, not only for security, but also because it shows that while Electron can have good cross-platform support, 
you still can treat certain operating systems like third-class citizens. And who's always the least well-supported? Yep, you guessed it, it's us, poor Penguin fanboys. We're not asking for much, just update your freaking Electron version, it's not that hard. And then there's the performance and resource usage. Since Electron apps ship basically the whole of Chromium's codebase, they aren't small. Discord, for example, once installed, weighs more than 700 megabytes, almost a gigabyte. Even the most basic of Hello World applications would take about 100 megabytes just to display a line of text. The size usage is extremely high if you compare it with a native application. And to think some people complain about the install size of Flatpaks. Seriously, look at Electron. Stop fat shaming Flatpak, start shaming Electron apps. Now, another example, GIMP, an application that does a lot more than Discord, uses 109 megabytes when installed, seven times less. Of all my apps, only LibreOffice uses more space, 813 megabytes for the entire Office suite. Discord uses the same disk space as an entire Office suite. And then there's the performance impact as well. Chromium isn't a lightweight browser at all. Each Electron app you open loads an entire Chromium instance in RAM, which can go up to 500 megabytes really fast. Discord, again, on my system, with all its processes, uses about 480 megabytes. And that RAM usage is the same whether the application is minimized to the tray or fully open. GIMP, when opening a new blank document, uses 500 megabytes, and LibreOffice Writer uses 150 megabytes of RAM for a blank document. This type of RAM usage is just way too high. And of course, unused RAM is wasted RAM. If it's not being used, it's just sitting there doing nothing. But if you fill it up with four Electron apps, you could have filled it up with eight more native applications. So your computer is actively doing less, but drawing more power. This can add up very quickly. It's probably not something you'll notice if you have 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. But if you have an older device with 4 to 8 gigabytes, then opening two or three Electron apps will bring your computer to a crawl. So you better make that swap file 20 or 30 gigs just to be sure. Electron is hated by a lot of people mainly because of this specific reason. Developers either assume users will run their app and their app only, or that all users have really high-end systems with a lot of RAM and CPU cycles. It prevents good optimization because there's always that incompressible Chromium part that you cannot control as a developer. And that's not counting JavaScript's tendency to leak memory, which can also add to a lot more RAM usage in the end. And still, specifically for us Linux users, Electron can be a boon, because not many developers would develop their apps for Linux using GTK or Qt. Not many do. But when supporting Linux is just as easy as supporting Windows or Mac, and doesn't really require any extra work, then the end result is that we get applications on Linux that we just wouldn't have had otherwise. We wouldn't have Discord or Teams or VS Code if Electron or alternative solutions didn't exist. These developers would never have taken the time to make a native Linux app using GTK or Qt. And if they did, people would complain about the choice of toolkit. Why didn't they pick my desktop of choice? They probably got paid. It's all a conspiracy. I will always favor an application that uses GTK or Qt over an Electron app. But I would also rather have access to many different applications than flat out refuse to use them because they are Electron or because the developer didn't make a native application. I see this along the same lines as Wine and Proton. Would you rather have only 10% of the Steam library playable on Linux because you could only use native Linux builds? Or do you prefer having 73% of the top 100 games on Steam that run thanks to Proton? And once the Linux desktop has reached enough users and has grown thanks to having actual apps, even if they're Electron, available, then maybe developers start differentiating themselves by bringing real native applications for our platform. In the end, I understand both viewpoints, why some developers love Electron, why some users hate it. But personally, even though I'm not a fan of Electron apps, I would rather have them available than not having any alternative available for this kind of use case. And I'd rather end this video with this segue to today's sponsor.
Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, but they ship worldwide a whole range of Linux laptops and desktops. What do I mean with Linux laptops and desktops? Well, they're just devices that have Linux pre-installed. You can pick from a variety of popular distributions when you order your device, or you can rest assured that you can install basically any other distro you want, thanks to great hardware that supports Linux natively, and access to some repositories that Tuxedo maintains, and that lets you install any configuration that you might need for everything to run optimally. They have a wide range of keyboard layouts and a wide range of devices that you can all configure to your heart's content with GPU options, CPU options, RAM, solid state storage, and even you can engrave your own graphic design on the lid, which is amazing. So if like me you're interested, because I just bought that Stellaris 15 in the back, which is their high-end gaming laptop, I use it to edit my videos. If you're interested in such a device, click the link in the description below and get yourself a new tuxedo laptop. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. Although I doubt you actually reached this part of the video if you didn't enjoy yourself. And if you have tons of cash lying around and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can click on the super thanks button underneath the video or on the PayPal link in the description or you can join my Patreon members or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!